Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part four for this news bulletin today. I busted out into a fourth part, figured I'd just get all this done today. Uh, we were talking about our people getting more stupid. Well, you know, they're being engineered. They're being dumbed down literally in the schools. That's the point of the uh, state mandated and, and federal funded and they're the ones who write the policy uh, educational curriculum is to dumb down um, the future leaders of the of the world right so I mean this is uh, this is this is an agenda right here and you have what if people were as stupid as in 1886 like I said they were probably a lot more intelligent than we are now but that's the disinformation that's the beauty of it because slaves now they think that they're smarter they, because they think this is progress so they they, they kind of snicker at people oh look at those people in their wagons you know what I mean it says suppose some snake oil salesman named James Hansen had been running around the country in 1886 claiming that he could prevent hurricanes by having everyone give up coal and oil. The consequences would have been catastrophic had been uh, people been that stupid enough to listen to Dr. James Hansen. So why in 2012 are people stupid enough to listen to an oil snake oil salesman like Mr. Hansen? Well, a great civilization is not conquered from without until it has destroyed itself from within. The essential cause of Rome's decline lay in her people her morals, her class struggle, her failing trade, her bureaucratic despotism, and her stifling taxes, her consuming wars. That was from Will Durant. So also, they want, to, like I said, they want to engineer you too, literally, so that, you know, you'll just be picking up garbage or you'll be a mechanic or, um, you know, if you're lucky enough, if you have enough money, uh, you can get the right DNA uh, when you go to the, you know, to the... Uh, to the, whatever the scientists, you know, because you're going to eventually have to go to them to be able to procreate. And uh, then you can be a lawyer, you can be a politician, right? It says, handmade humans may hold the key to saving the world. Climate change is a problem that requires thinking, sometimes uncomfortably, outside the accepted status quo. Again, there's that status quo thing with traditional values in that family. One of them, of course, is making shorter children. I covered this before. Pharmacological meat intolerance. Basically, you take a pill and it makes you sick to your stomach. Uh, so that you don't like meat anymore. And if you want to change the status quo, you have to go with this uh, change, pharmacological induction of altruism and empathy. So there's many environmental problems, because it's all in the name of climate change, right? Our collective action problems. So individuals do not cooperate for the common good, but if people are generally more willing to act as a group, may be able to enjoy sort of benefits that arise when large numbers of people act together. Of course, would it be in the individual's and humanity's interest, uh, best interest? No, of course not. That's how you know it's mind control because it's someone else outside, another source that this hidden hand that's pushing you in a direction that's going to screw you and your and your future of your family and your species and your race uh, over. So they want you to do it and fund it yourself, killing yourself off, so they can control you more. So it goes on here and it says that they're going to basically use uh, uh you know drugs and everything, right? They're going to just, you know, these little non-adrenaline reuptake inhibitors increase social engagement. So there you go, engineering humans. And uh, so are people becoming dumber? They're going to make them shorter? Remember this, human species may split in two. Humanity may split into two uh, subspecies in 100 years, 100,000 years, sorry. Time is predicted by H.G. Wells. Well, I think it's going to be a lot sooner than that. I think it's going to be a lot uh sooner than that is split into an elite and an underclass so we're, we're kind of already there i mean like i said you just look around you see a lot of potato people um los angeles city council embraces meatless mondays la became the biggest city to endorse the movement to reduce meat consumption for health and environmental reasons like i've mentioned this many times before the elites themselves have their own organic farms in china the communist party they have their own farms uh the royalty they have their own angus organic farms so um, they're not going to be following this as well because they have to be the leaders. They have to be intelligent enough to be able to run the world. So breast cancer propaganda and the globalist anti-meat agenda. So goes on here. Uh, this American Institute for Cancer Research has concluded that eating meat can increase the risk of contracting breast cancer, but only in Caucasian women. And then the name of uh, climate change as well. They talk about 18% of the world's greenhouse gases come directly uh, linked to livestock, meat. So it goes on and it says that um, the globalist answer to the problem of livestock cultivation is adopting a global vegetarian diet. And another solution to replacing livestock is the creation of artificial meat, synthesized meat. The CEO of PayPal is pushing that back in it in Japan. They're creating um, 
uh, meat out of poop. So wheelchair activist sues 39 stores and some cry extortion. So goes on here and says she wants wheelchair access in her NYC area. So a handicapped New Yorker is suing 39 stores in her neighborhood for lacking wheelchair access, a legal crusade that some shop owners are likening to extortion. So she's demanding $500 in damages and 15,000 uh, smackaroos and, and experts and lawyers fees. So she says, if you think this is a money making scheme, you're dead wrong. 70% of the uh, the people here, the readers, found this article annoying. So it's kind of like South Park with, uh, uh, what was it, kind of like cow tipping. There was a little scooter tipping of all these fat, obese people on them. So, and they made, what did they do to fix the problem? Well, they just uh, made these little pneumatic, uh, little, basically they're kind of like kickstands for bikes that prop them back up. Vegetative patient communicates with scientists. So a Canadian man who is believed to have been a, in a vegetative state for more than a decade has been able to tell scientists that he is not in any pain. So uh, pretty interesting. It uh, says here that it was asked questions while having his brain activity scanned by this fMRI machine. His doctor says the discovery means medical textbooks will need rewriting. So... I wonder if he was like, no, no, I just, just fucking, you know, this sucks. Just pull the plug, just pull the plug. Um, but it reminds you of what? The uh, Menangere, basically the Star Trek episode, right? It was all based off the premise, premise that this uh, Christopher Pike was not, wasn't able to speak. It says he uses a wheelchair operated by brain waves. He cannot speak and only communicates with a flashing light. One means yes and two means no. World War Z, didn't even hear, hear about this. Uh, I guess it has Brad Pitt in there, um, but everybody's saying that this movie kind of sucked and they spent too much money on a, on a big actor like Brad Pitt. So the UN employee is racing against time and fate as he travels the world trying to stop the outbreak of deadly zombie uh, pandemic. So they're really pushing this. I wouldn't be surprised if there really is going to be some kind of um, a virus or something like that. Um, it would be the use. It would be a combination of aerosols, um, microwaves, um, whether uh, possibly food, vaccinations, uh, something in the water supply uh, to create this type of a zombie symptom. So, and I'm not sure if I'm going to butcher this word, but uh, deceptive doctors trick Sharon Osbourne into having double mastectomy due to bad breast cancer genes. So one of the last things any woman would want to hear is that she may be carrying a gene that commonly leads to breast cancer, but is just the possibility of developing such a cancer worth having both of them removed. Yeah, that's what they've been pushing. Deeply emotional interview, Osborne said that uh, she had done this invasive surgical procedure to reduce her risk of developing the disease after being told by her doctor she was carrying the gene. It goes on and says, as soon as I found out I had the breast cancer gene, I thought the odds are not in my favor. I've had cancer before, and I didn't want to live under that cloud. I just decided to take everything off. But uh, it goes on. It says, in the process, Osborne found out that her breast implant she had had before surgery had leaked into her stomach wall, and the rest of the surgical experience as a whole turned her off to any future plastic surgery, saying, sometimes I'll see a photo and I'll think my face looks plastic. It can look so unnatural from certain angles, and now I'm definitely, definitely done saying you can't buy your youth back no matter how much money you've got, I won't be going under the knife again. And this, of course, is, you know, part of the cyborgs and body parts and, and uh, you know, youth is everything and dying, you should be afraid of death um, type of thing, type of programming, which ultimately leads to augmented reality, which is, you know, the matrix, what I was talking about. Get rid of those pesky bodies. Essential medicine Tamiflu accused of, I don't know if it's essential medicine, accused of being useless in fighting the flu as experts call for legal action against manufacturers. So, you know, this was known as having mercury in it and stuff like that. So, you know, which uh, fries brain neurons like fluoride. So instead of attacking it from that angle, no, they just say, well, it's not working good enough, right? So Tamiflu is used to treat both seasonal flu and new flu viruses like the bird flu or swine flu they're talking about lab made viruses then we have health canada lifts hold on novartis flu shots or vaccines health canada has lifted its hold on these flu vaccines saying they are safe to use so it goes on here and says they bought the vaccines for this year's flu shot campaigns and now resume the use of the products the decision follows a risk assessment conducted by health canada 
using information gathered from European regulatory agencies. This is crazy because uh, out there in uh, Norway, I think it was, one of those countries, they actually banned uh, the sale of those one of those Novartis flu shots. So uh, I saw this propaganda piece, flu during pregnancy linked to autism. Unbelievable. The, the Just like I said, the naivety that people... Uh, have, dude, if they actually believe this stuff, saying that um, studies does not suggest that high fever or flu causes autism. Many experts said the correlation reinforces recommendations that all pregnant women should get their flu shot, get their dose of eugenics. So there's no, there's no proof, but they're saying that during pregnancy, they were at least twice as likely to have a child with autism. So it's the flu shots that are probably causing the autism so they're saying no you need to get a flu shot to avoid autism i mean dude you could make this up and next up all brit babies to get rotavirus vaccine so all infants age four months in britain are to be offered two doses of this rotavirus uh, eugenics dose uh, beginning next year but basically it has to do with diarrhea so they'll have vaccines for anything pepsi's latest fat blocking soda at least it claims so it goes on it says that you can get skinny by drinking pepsi well it goes on and it says that it goes on sale. It contains dextrin, a fiber that supposedly helps to reduce fat levels. So, pretty interesting. <laughs> and then remember this, researchers work on belly fat vaccine. Could a simple injection help you lose belly fat? So, that's called genetically modified guts, right? All this food in there, it just doesn't break down or anything. But now they're going to have a vaccine that uh, can actually help you lose belly fat. Marvel making uh, vaccines in tobacco or out of tobacco. So it goes on here and it says that um, they're working on producing flu vaccines made from a type of tobacco plant as part of a move to diversify. So a quick side point, uh, most of the people in the generation, especially the younger people, they have, and, and the older people, to hang on to that, that old mind control program that they have in them, that paradigm, it, you know, it shakes them once they start to break out of it. And uh, so they need to hang on to it. I'm talking about people being naive or stupid. Well, a lot of it too is they have an incentive to not uh, to go and start thinking independently and critically because if they do, they'll be considered um, sick. You know, you're very, very sick. Uh, scientists are now uh, saying that creativity is part of a mental illness. That's right, creativity. But remember this, how teenage rebellion has become a mental illness saying that not complying with authority is now in many cases labeled a disease. So it's not just teens, it's everybody, grown adults. Because remember, the way these social engineers treat people are, are like children, right? That's why they don't want you to think. Let them do the thinking for you. That's why cops, uh, uh, like the babysitters, treat you like children. We have this transgender surgery covered by growing number of U.S. companies. So yeah, it's uh, pretty interesting. More companies are funding these transgender uh, surgeries. You have this sex change surgery for prison inmate granted by judge. This was September 2012. The ruling was that uh, failure to do so violated the prisoner's Eighth Amendment right to adequate treatment. So it's kind of like um, what they call reproductive health, which is um, uh, abortions and contraceptive contraceptives and stuff like that, and uh, teaching uh, young people about sex before they probably should even know about it and by people who shouldn't be teaching them about it. Then you have Illinois relaxes requirements for transgender identi identity documentation. So, you know, of course, Illinois, uh, they're gonna be on board with this, so. But that's the thing as far as the, you know, the parents, like I said, they, they, they actually don't mind that. They just want the school to go ahead and, and raise their children for them, right? But it's not even the school because like my mom told me, she don't even write the curriculum. She's getting ready to retire after being in the quote industry or whatever, um, she, you know, she has to fight to get anything that she wants to do in there. It's completely controlled by these people. They have no, they, like she said, they know nothing about teaching or about helping people. And I was born a boy, but became a girl. And now I wanted to be a boy again. Britain's youngest sex swap patient to reverse her sex change treatment. She says that, uh, she found the changes overwhelming and that they have made her deeply unhappy. There's many stories of this. This is just one. Man undergoes sex change surgery, then decides to reverse the entire procedure. It goes on and he says that it should be sex reassignment surgery should be outlawed. And he says that he calls everyone who is transgender delusional. Interesting. His name, he's a British billionaire. His name's Charles Kane, like Charles Foster Kane of the movie Citizen Kane. 
He said he hated how the uh, hormones made him moody and emotional. He said no matter how feminine he looked, he felt like he was playing a role. Thank you.